Okay. Do you, do you think the privatization of space travel is a hindrance to the long-term goal of deep space exploration? It should have happened decades ago. And uh, it... No. And, and, okay, and actually, I, I agree with you in that sense because, well, I'm not sure decades ago, I think the government had to be involved to learn how to get things going. Uh, I, I don't think... Decades don't, ago, we knew, how to, yeah. we knew how to go in and out of low Earth orbit since exactly. 1962. Exactly. That's right. So, that's, that's exactly. decades ago. That's right, and that's not deep, that, but that's not deep space exploration. But I think you're absolutely right. The private industry is a perfect place to do low Earth orbit because... Yes. Uh, and not NASA, because it's boring and dull, and, it, oh, and it's... Yeah. No, you, and, can, and, you can generalize it. It's not simply that private enterprise is for low Earth orbit. Private enterprise is for anything where the risks have been pre-assessed yeah. yeah. by the government investment in the frontier, which is, why I think, where NASA should live, on the frontier, on the moving frontier. And, and at, as that frontier moves, it leaves behind routine. It leaves behind certain needs of the, of the activity, and those needs would then uh, be a void filled by private enterprise who would surely do it more efficiently than any government enterprise can. But the frontier, where it's dangerous, it's expensive, and all the risks are unquantified, you combine these through three, you cannot establish a capital market valuation of that frontier, and so, therefore, government has to take the first step if you're going to do this at all. And, and that's why the, the, the post office doesn't have their own postal planes. You rent space in the belly of Delta Airlines because they can do it more efficiently. Yeah, no, well, that's, 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 but that's, that's, true of, that's true of all science. Medicine is the same way. Business is not going to step it into fundamental research. NIH is going to do it, and they're going to take that risk. And it's, you can apply it any big risk. In fact, it's really important. In our, right now, people are saying, well, you know, you've got to fund science that has immediate application. But in fact, the government is there to fund the research that no private industry is ever going to fund because the benefits are a generation away. But in fact, 50% of our gross national product comes from fundamental curiosity-based research a generation ago. And the only way to do that is with the government. Correct. Now, we're all agreed with that, but the thing where we may disagree, and I'd be interested to see, because uh, actually it'd be interesting because you're the planetary society, and I, I wonder whether Brian agrees with me on this, because I think most, many scientists like me would say the frontier doesn't involve people. The frontier oh. that NASA is doing in space, the, most in, the real science that NASA does, doesn't involve 100-pound bags of water. I didn't say okay. science. I talked about No, no, I want to... Okay. There's a distinction here. Yeah. If you only want to do science in space, yeah, you, you would never send humans. You, you agree. You would send robots. Even the geologist who would love to go to Mars with the yeah. hammer would just love it. If you gave the geologist the option, I can send you to one spot, or I can send 100 uh, spacecraft, uh, uh, 100 rovers. Rovers, rovers. rovers to 100 different spots that you can pick. They're picking the 100 rovers. No, actually, that's not true. I'm in the Department of, of Geology, among other things, and, and uh, many of my colleagues there disagree and say they they think a geologist could do in a little while what rovers could do. I happen to disagree. I think. <laughs> no, no. Did you tell them 100 rovers yeah, in 100 did. different spots? I did. You know what? I told them. Okay. I told them the real number, which is probably a thousand different rovers, because you okay. can send. A, let me finish for a second, Neil. Um, uh, they, they, you can send, as I often say, you can send a rover to Mars for the price that it takes to make a movie about sending Bruce Willis to Mars. Mm -hmm. and, That's right. And, and, and this is but if you, if you told if you told the geologists it was a one-way trip. Which is what I've argued for. But they for, still want to be going. They still want to go. Yeah, they, then they're just crazy. I mean, just no, why are you even talking to those geologists? No, so you guys, just if I may speak briefly about the Planetary Society, we are fighting the good fight to restore funding <laughs> for planetary exploration. We're trying to get one and a half billion a year, so we need 300 million for planetary science, and it's, in, it's being threatened. Uh, so fiscal year 14 is coming up for NASA. If you've got nothing else to do, please check out planetary.org and consider supporting this, because our claim is uh, science is what NASA does best, and planetary science is the best of that. And so we really would like you all to consider supporting it. It is such a good value. It is such, it's such an amazing value, so uh, consider. And by the way, it's been estimated that what 
The rover does, built by our very best rover engineers, uh, driven by our very best rover scientists, uh, uh, rover drivers, uh, <laughs> who are influenced by our very best scientists. What that does in a week, a human geologist can do in about a minute. Yeah, but yeah, it, I, I agree, so, but the no, human no, geologist... So there's is, the cost. It, it's not going to run to 100 different places on the planet. In fact, actually, the human geologist, I think, most often, is not going to make it alive to the planet. Well, I mean, so and, on and so on. But yeah. this is where you see, it's, instead of 10,001, it's got to be like a billion to one. So, we'll get there. The longest journey starts with but a single step. <laughs> no, but uh, the, other thing, the other thing I want to... Like, I, I, let's stay on this topic for a little longer, because oh, it, it, I, I maintain the reason people are interested in humans traveling in space is because they can die. That's what makes it interesting, and you want to see if they're going to die. <laughs> and, and, um, and, I but, thought, you know, and, and, I but I... thought that was NASCAR. But, <laughs> what? I thought that was NASCAR that you're talking about. Uh, but, you know, but, but I find... <laughs> but let Mars. me ask you a question. I find it... Mars. it Okay, well, when, so I'll ask you this question. When I see a picture from the rover, I, I'm more excited about it that, from, coming from the rover than if it came from an astronaut taking the picture. Because the astronaut's using a camera, but the rover is taking the It's part of the rover. Let me tell you why that's okay. probably not true, even okay. though you think it is. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> most people don't know that there were robots as well as rovers on the moon mm -hmm. while we were first going to the moon but you didn't know anything about those because the media focused on the astronauts. And it's the astronauts through which we gain vicarious access to space because they have mouths, they have brains, they have a childhood memory, they have school teachers that can talk about those astronauts. And I've yet to see a ticker tape parade for a robot. So I submit to you that Wait. if at the same time the Curiosity rover landed, if at that same time a human astronaut landed on Mars, you would have known nothing about the Curiosity rover. Yeah, but, it would have been relegated uh, right. to page 30, and the front page headlines would have been humans put footprints on Mars. And it's that force which will bring less science than the robot that has a power of influence yeah. on our culture that inspires an entire generation to want to do the same thing. My, my generation... My generation, when you ask my fellow scientists, should we send humans into space? No, that's too expensive, send robots. Yet they, I said, well, how did you get interested in space? Oh, because of the Apollo program. And I slap them. <laughs> I'm saying, what are you... <clears throat> no, that's it. <laughs> no, there would on, be... On the, other, on the other hand, on the other hand, if you, if you remember, if Apollo 13 hadn't been the dramatic failure it was, they would have canceled the rest of the Apollo. They canceled three of the last Couldn't missions. End on that there, are three, yeah. there were three Apollo, the three Saturn V rockets lying on the ground around space, around the, the country, because they, it was so interesting that they, they abolished the last three. No, that's, but, that's delusional, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> it's, not, it's not incorrect. That's the fact. No, no, no. You can argue with the facts. I, watch me. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, everybody like mentioned their book. It's time for me to mention my latest book. It's I don't think anyone mentioned their book actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my most recent book is titled Space Chronicles, but that wasn't the original title. The original title was Failure to Launch. But the the dreams and delusions of space enthusiasts. And the publisher says, oh, that's too, oh, that's too depressing. You can't have the word failure in your title. It's, but that's what it's about. What you just said is a complete delusion. It presumes that we went to the moon for science. It no. presumes that we went to the moon to explore it. But that's not why we went no. to the moon. We no, went to Brother the moon. Neil, no, it is not. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> we went to the moon because we were at war. Sputnik was not just some orbiting spacecraft. It was a hollowed out intercontinental ballistic missile where they took out the warhead and put in a radio transmitter. The military knew this. That's what founded NASA. NASA's budget for science has, it averaged over all these years about 25%. The rest has been for geopolitical purposes. 
All right? So it's the I don't want to die driver in this world. That's why we spent all this money. And so the moment we learn Russia's not going to the moon and it's certainly not going to Mars, we cancel the program. It had nothing to do with public interest. Okay, now let me... It, 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 is, it is a... Let, let me try... I, I, I got to pull back. Yeah, I'm you got to come in. But... but it is. A, uh, let me try and bridge that gap a little bit. I'm going to be uh, silent. Uh, um, no, you're not. Um, <laughs> but uh, th I think it's really important to point to point out that this is a political issue. And in fact, I, 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 me and Buzz Aldrin together so testified before the House Ex Science Committee on Space Exploration. And I, w I, when I said that that humans don't do science in space, I didn't argue, in fact, even before the committee, that. We shouldn't send humans into space. We should just say well, honestly why we're doing it. We're doing it for adventure. That's why we're doing it. No, that's honest. not what funded hold it. Hold on, hold on. No, that's, that's not true. So you said you wouldn't talk. But, yeah, I did say. Uh, okay, okay. You, you can say that. No, no, but it's, hold it's, on. No, there's, there's no there there. Okay? <laughs> there, no. Just, just, just look at the history of everybody no, no. doing big projects, and it's never driven by exploration. It's never driven by science. It's never driven by curiosity. Not if it's big and expensive. It's driven by the fact that people don't want to die. So there's a war driver. It's also driven by the fact that people want to get wealthy. So no, no, a hold on. We have the large, the, the large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider. Do you know? Oh, no. <laughs> no. This proves my point. Yeah, yeah, this the Large Hadron Collider. <laughs> uh, please remind me of the total construction cost of the Large Hadron Collider. I don't know, about 10 billion. About 10 billion. That is six months of NASA funding. So you call that big budget? Not here in America, it's not. Yeah, NASA's budget's about 17 billion. Doesn't go as far as it used to. No, so, no. so it's expensive, but not on the scale that we're talking about here. Okay. That's all the country shared that. That's, that's not big money. Okay. Big that, money is a shuttle mission costs a billion dollars here. One I'm not saying half. it should cost that, but that's one what it and does. Half. And what, who, who writes those checks? It's people who do it for geopolitical reasons, not because they care about science. Our super collider, the one that you would have benefited from, the, sup <laughs> the superconducting super collider, <laughs> Started to get funding in the 1980s, wasn't it? 200-mile yeah. ring, it would have been... No, 60-mile 60, 60 ring. 60-mile diameter, the circumference. 60, 60 miles around, yeah. I thought it was 60 times Well, take pi. it from me, it's 60. Pi? No, no, it's 60. Okay. It's a better story with 200, miles? though. Brian? 60. 60. Circumference? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, I've been saying it wrong all these years. Well, like Never mind. Thank you. Never mind. Okay, no, so watch, watch. So, here's a super collider. We... America would have found the Higgs boson decades ago, all right? So what happens? The budget gets cut for reasons, oh, the cost overruns, right? excuse me, okay? Yeah, it got okay. cut in the early 90s. What happened in 1989? Peace broke out in Europe. All of a sudden, the physicist, who was the hero of the 20th century for making the bomb, is no longer viewed as necessary to national security. And so the, the project gets cut like that. Actually, you got it wrong. The project got cut, actually, for even sillier political it's reasons, right. which was the Texas congressional delegation voted the wrong way. And, the, and If we were still at war, that would have never come up. Yeah. It's you also the International Space Station, right? I mean, yes, that's, that's true. That's, that's, that's the top story. The bottom story is okay. we don't longer think Look, we're going to die. Okay. So what we've, let, let's leave this topic, but science and politics are, alas, inextricably mixed. And we, I think... And politics wins And every time. I think... What, what I would say is that it's vitally important for the public to understand what their issues really are so they won't be lied to by the politicians effectively and they can do, elect people to, to base policy on empirical evidence and not on ideology or anything else. Yeah. Okay. Humans tell